Uh, we need to be able to help and be able to, you know, come back and get people back in the homes, get the water, and get the power back. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to the Congressman. Thank you. First of all, uh, I want to thank the Governor of Puerto Rico for his leadership and all he's been doing in the island uh, to, to make uh, our island to recover soon with all, all local airports, municipalities, but also the federal government. As we speak, uh, we just got the opportunity in the island to have uh, during last week, President Trump, Vice President Pence, on Saturday, a Senate delegation. But today, it, it's a good day for Puerto Rico. We just got here uh, the leadership of the House of Representatives. We got the Speaker of the House, uh, uh, Mr. Paul Ryan, who has been helping the island before the hurricane, uh, during a lot of issues, Medicaid, uh, taxes, and many others. And uh, it's, it's been always a friend of Puerto Rico. Uh, today he's leading a uh, bipartisan uh, uh, delegation here with the chair of the Republican Conference, Kathy McMorris. Thank you for coming uh, to the island. Uh, also, uh, the, the chairman of the Appropriations uh, Committee, uh, Mr. Rodney Freelandhausen, thank you for all your leadership drafting the uh, yesterday legislation regarding $36 billion. Uh, the second one, the second relief package that has been approved. And in that same committee, we got a ranking member, Nita Lowy, uh, who was also working uh, with, with that legislation that is actually giving the Puerto Rico the money uh, that is needed uh, in terms of having liquidity for the next month and uh, putting money and resources in FEMA uh, so the government of Puerto Rico can work together matching the federal funds that are needed to continue the recovery efforts. Uh, as, as, a, as the only and sole representative of Puerto Rico in the U.S. Congress, representing 3.4 million American citizens, this is the only way uh, we can have a, an actual voice. And actually, the House of Representatives has been part of the first responders uh, to this uh, disaster. This is the second package. The first one, the first one was with Irma. Uh, it was $15 billion that were approved uh, by the leadership that is actually here today. And last night, uh, the House passes another bill regarding uh, those efforts in Puerto Rico. Uh, so for that, I will be always grateful uh, to the Speaker of the House and all leadership and members both sides of the aisle, uh, because that commitment is the one that Puerto Rico needs in, in this uh, in dire situation. With that, I will have you and I will introduce uh, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Paul Ryan, a friend of Puerto Rico. Oh. You should be clapped at press conferences, so thank you. That's very rare. Uh, first, I just want to say on behalf of not just myself, but all of us in Congress on this bipartisan trip, that our heart goes out to the people of Puerto Rico. Uh, what we have seen here today, what we've seen here today confirms that this is first and foremost a humanitarian disaster. But we, what we have seen also today is a very compassionate, resilient spirit. What we've seen is people coming together working together to help victims, to rebuild communities. I want to commend everyone who has come to the aid of our fellow citizens here in Puerto Rico. I want to commend the men and the women in our military, our guard and our reserves, uh, the people at FEMA, the, the people from the other states. We just were on the floor meeting people from California and Oklahoma and Texas who came from mutual aid. And I want to especially thank the people right here in Puerto Rico who probably haven't slept you know, an hour a day for, for all of the hard work. There is so much work to be done, and we want everyone to know that we are absolutely committed to getting this done, to solving this problem. That's why the House has moved twice already. This is why the House moved quickly yesterday to pass an emergency supplemental disaster assistance package to address this urgent matter, this urgent humanitarian disaster. This legislation will provide more response. I'll just give you a, just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, uh, you have a situation where local communities don't have a, a revenue base anymore. They have no tax base anymore. There's a proposal and a program, the, the Community Disaster Loan Program, which we funded last night to address things like that. We put more money in the Disaster Relief Fund, which is what FEMA uses, to pay for clearing the roads, putting up the power lines, getting more generators, transporting the fuel, getting the hospitals up and running. So we're just making sure that all of the resources are there so that this response is happening. And the last thing I want to say is I want to thank Jennifer Gonzalez. I want to thank Congresswoman Gonzalez for making sure that every person in Congress is aware of what is happening. I want to thank Congresswoman Gonzalez for her invitation to have us come down here as quickly as possible 
so that, as you said, Governor, we can see this with our own eyes, we can hear this with our own ears, just how dire the situation is and why we have to be responding like we are. This isn't the last aid package. This is the second and more to come. But we want to make sure that the resources are here and we want the people of Puerto Rico to know that we are here for them and that we are going to see this through with them because we want to make sure that we can rebuild stronger than ever before. And I want to thank, I want to thank all the first responders, lastly, um, for, their hero for their heroic works. Thank you. Questions? Okay, the speaker will, will take two questions. Uh, MBC. Hi, how are you, Speaker Ryan? I actually have two questions, one for the speaker and one for the FEMA representative. Speaker Ryan, do you believe it is the federal government's responsibility to help rebuild the infrastructure here long term? When you're building it short term, you're also building it long term. When you're putting up a power line, that power line is going to be long term. If you're going to put up a power line, let's put up a power line that can withstand hurricane force winds. It makes no sense to put temporary patches on, on problems that have long term effects. We just flew over um, down power lines. We want to make sure that when we rebuild power lines, that they can withstand you know 150 mile per hour winds like they, they, they received before. So yes, we do believe that natural disasters, this is of all things, a area of responsibility for the government at all levels of government. This is why we have FEMA. This is why we have the disaster relief fund. This is why we pass emergency supplementals. So we do believe that there's a very important proper role at all levels of government to respond to this now, in the meantime, for the immediate term and over the long haul. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, for the FEMA representative, thank you, sir, for taking this question. We spoke with uh, the general in charge of this effort, uh, the military relief effort, General Buchanan. He said that this is the worst natural disaster that he has seen. If that's the case, why is the amount of FEMA personnel that is here a third of the size of the personnel that was in Florida for Hurricane Irma and a fourth of the size of the personnel that was in Florida, that was in Texas for Hurricane Harvey. How can you justify that? It's not a question to justify, it's a question of having what you need to get the job done. We have the right amount of people here. We're bringing more people in. We're supplementing because the type of assistance we need now is, is direct on the ground assistance. And that's where General Buchanan's uh, work, uh, General Reyes' support with the National Guard is making a difference because they are the force multiplier for us to get direct to the people. Because, you know, FEMA, even if FEMA brought every single one of their people, we wouldn't be able to have the impact that the force multiplication of having the military there has given us. And that's what we need right now because this is still a response. That we, you know, we're gonna start to talk about recovery, but we have to get the food out to the people, we have to get the water out to the people, and the people that, that we rely on to get it done is the United States military. The final question, Mr. Speaker, um, when do you expect that Congress will be considering, considering the additional aid that has been requested from the government of Puerto Rico and do you think that, con that Congress will be granting the flexibility that the government of Puerto Rico is asking in the use of that of those funds? Yes, so at this stage in the process, uh, as I just mentioned, we respond immediately to the emergency humanitarian disaster requests. And now what we're doing, uh, this is Puerto Rico, Florida, and Texas. Uh, those requests go to the federal government, to the executive branch, to the Office of Management and Budget. They have circulated um, uh, memos government-wide making sure that we uncover everything that is needed and then to do their scrub, do their analysis of what those needs are. When we get that final analysis, the administration will submit yet again to Congress a request for another aid package to respond to these longer term problems. Uh, Jennifer made sure that we went to the interior of the island, to, to, to the mountain area, to see just how, how widespread the devastation was there. And then we also listened to mayors who represent a lot of these towns that still um, have bridges out on their in their one road towns that can't get people to. So at this stage, we're in the humanitarian crisis moment. We're in the we're in the crisis moment of making sure that lives are saved, that people are put out of harm's way, that hospitals are running, that water is flowing, that power is up and running. So that is the phase we're in right now. But clearly, there are going to be more phases, and that is what the administration is packaging and and doing their analysis to make sure that on the next aid package, it is more geared toward the long term. Um, going back to the last question that you asked, the question about the long-term viability of Puerto Rico, our fellow citizens, we are all in this with each other for the long haul to make sure that this island survives, that this is a beautiful place to raise a family, to grow, to have an, an economy that, that can kick off great jobs. This is something that we're all invested together. We've been working on Puerto Rico legislation for a few years now, 
And so we've got a lot more to do to make sure that we can invest in the long haul to make sure that the Puerto Rico economy is strong and that the Puerto Rico government is financed and, and, and self-sufficient. And right now, it's emergency. Next step, it's, it's the interim part, and that's what we're waiting for the administration to give us that request. Next, excuse the member of Congress. Thank you very much.